Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to talk about magnesium. It's one of the major macronutrients that your plants need to have in the garden soil so that they thrive and do really well. The main macronutrients we always hear about are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but there's also calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And today I want to talk about magnesium. What does magnesium do for your plant? Why is it needed? Magnesium is required really to give the leaves the green color. It's really involved in the production of chlorophyll. So if you don't have enough magnesium in your soil, your plants aren't going to be as green. They're going to have trouble with uh, chlorophyll production. And if you think about it, if your plants don't have chlorophyll, chlorophyll, they're not going to get you know, the energy they need from the sun and they're just not going to do well. The magnesium also helps to give uh, strength to cell walls. It's involved in enzyme production. It's involved in seed germination. And it helps the plant um, also take up other nutrients that are in the soil. So if you don't have enough magnesium, your plant may not be able to pull in the nitrogen that's in there. So it's, it's really essential. You need to have magnesium. The good news about magnesium is it's in most soils, so you don't have to over-worry that, you know, it's not in there. But keep an eye on your plants. If you have a deficiency, the deficiency will look like this. If you have a tomato plant and you have the green veins going through the tomato plant, and you can see the veins if you look closely, the spaces in between those veins will start to go from green to yellow out. So the, the veins stay green, but the yellowing starts happening in between those veins. And it'll usually start on the bottom of the leaves. And if you watched my other videos, that also sounds like other possible deficiencies. And you can kind of see that your plants may react in a way that sounds similar, yet we're not exactly sure, you know, what, you know, fertilizer may be lacking in your garden. So you're always just looking for plant stress, and then you kind of have to have a mental checklist of how are you supplying nitrogen, how are you supplying phosphorus, how are you supplying potassium. Um, if you are putting that into the soil, then maybe it's a chance that maybe it's not enough magnesium. So it's sort of a process of elimination. So if you have the deficiency, you have the yellowing between the leaf veins, you can have leaf curl, the leaves can turn purple or red, sometimes the stems can look uh, a different color, but most importantly you can just have a stunted plant, stunted growth, and probably your plant's going to die. That's with the deficiency, and again, it's very hard for soils not to have magnesium in it, especially in the home garden, where you're turning over soil that's been around for a long time and you're putting plants into there. Now, part of my goal of these videos is just to help you understand what the fertilizer is, what the nutrient is, what the element is, and you can make decisions if you want to use it or not use it. You can do soil tests to see what's in your garden, uh, you know, nutrient-wise. Um, it's up to you, but I really want you to understand where you can uh, find magnesium in products and add it to your garden. And there's two main ways that I... I think, or there are at least two main ways. Garden lime, pelleted lime, this is dolomitic lime. It's 10% magnesium, 17% magnesium oxide, 15% magnesium carbonate. And it's pelleted by the company so that it's easy to use. But this is a slow release product. And this is Epsom salts. It's hydrated magnesium sulfate. It's about 10% magnesium and it's fast release. So right now, our, the two products I have are a slow release and a fast release and you would use them in different ways. The garden lime again is a slow release and it can also raise the pH of your soil but if you're using it in a sensible way and you're not overusing it your soil pH isn't going to vary that much. Magnesium sulfate again fast release you can make this uh, a mixture in water you can pour it right onto the leaves it won't change the pH. So this is fast act acting, it's a foliar feed, and it won't change the pH of your garden soil. If you were going to use garden lime, the best way to use it really is to put in two to four tablespoons. I keep tablespoons all over the place out in my yard, but it's just one, two, and maybe, you know, one or two more, right into the planting hole, mix it in really well, disperse it throughout the whole planting hole, put your plant in and that will get magnesium and it will also get lime into your garden or, or I'm sorry it will also get calcium into your garden and calcium is another macronutrient which I will talk about in another video. So I usually put the lime in at planting and that's just to get it in the soil let it start uh, interacting with the garden soil the environment let it start breaking down let it start getting into a usable form of magnesium for your plant. 
Now Epsom salts I use about one to two tablespoons per gallon. I sometimes use it at planting if I don't have the lime available but mostly I'll do a uh, mix at blooming time. So when your plants start to bloom that's when I give them the first dose of Epsom salts and that's one tablespoon in a gallon of water. I pour it right over the plant, just soak the leaves real quick, soak some of the soil around there and your plant will be able to absorb magnesium. And then again maybe about two weeks later and that's at the point where your plant is flowering and setting fruit and that's when I find it needs the boost of magnesium sulfate. And that's just from my experience that I think the tomatoes, the peppers, the eggplant, the nightshade family plants really seem to get a benefit from you know two feedings of Epsom salts during the growing season. I think the plants are bushier, I think the fruits are a little bit bigger, and I think I get more production and you know that's just by me eyeballing it when I use the product. Now that being said, I said I use this for the nightshade plants. Um, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, I even use them on my potatoes. If you're growing lettuce, radishes, you don't really need to do this process with it. They're going to be fine with the magnesium that's in there. But the bigger plants, again, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, I will use this. I'll also use it for cucumbers, uh, zucchini, squashes, the plants that really seem to suck the life out of the soil. Um, I will use Epsom salts. And also, gardening, gardening in containers. I will use lime in my container soil, and I will also hit it with... Uh, magnesium sulfate. And the reason being is in a five gallon container with a massive plant all the nutrients are just getting pulled out of there. So you really want to use these products I think more in containers. Just something to keep in mind. Now what I usually say is don't use more fertilizer than you need. Use less. It's okay. I don't want to freak people out and have them think they got to go through all these products get it all into their soil. In a home garden, if you're turning soil over for the first time or even been gardening for a while, you have a lot of product in there, a lot of fertilizers, a lot of nature, a lot of everything. So your plants are going to do pretty well, but at times you do need to add in the fertilizer. So that's why I want to educate you on you know what to do with these different products and want to stress use less. Now compost and organic matter, if you're putting in compost regularly, if you're putting in organic matter regularly, you're going to be already adding in a lot of the macronutrients, a lot of the micronutrients, so your garden is going to be taken care of. So just don't overuse these products, don't panic. Most importantly, I hope you enjoy your garden, I hope you enjoy the process of starting something from a little seed, taking care of it, you know, growing it to full size, and then enjoying the vegetables. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.